I think this model is literally like five minutes away from looking pretty incredible. A few times that by 20, your army would look absolutely insane. Hello guys, the Horus Heresy onslaught continues. It's the Iron Warriors this time, and we've got one hour. We're using metallics, we're using Dirty Down Rust, we're painting some hazard stripes in the rush. Um, but yeah, it turned out really well, like really, really well. Um, I think this might be the paint job that would benefit the most from being multiplied because of how striking the hazards are and the rust on it and stuff like that. You can let me know what you think, uh, which one of our recent ones has been the most successful and why. I genuinely would be really interested to hear it. Check out the other videos, we'll link them below for the other Horus Heresy content. Anyway, if you're not familiar with the Dirty Down Rust, we'll cover more about that in the outro. We've done a video on my first impressions of it though. It is a magic product, it's absolutely insane, and you'll see what it did for our paint job in two minutes at the very end. An hour might sound like a lot for a model. This is a lot more like 20 to 30 minutes if you're a batch painting or painting five of these at once or 10 at once or 20 at once. It's brilliant, turned out really well. We love paint metallics, let's jump in. Okay, so I know that we are you guys a Sons of Horus army uh, from the voting, but I do not have much time and we're gonna do something a little bit different from the last couple of tutorials. We're gonna get a Iron Warrior done as fast as possible. So got some really striking things to kind of lean on, hazard stripes, um, I don't know if I'm going to want to do them around the baubles. Maybe that's more forgiving, maybe it's less forgiving, don't know. But uh, we have our guy, we're going to slap down some metallics super quick, we're going to get high result fast, and uh, we're going to be using some washes of course. Our speed is of the essence, but this should look great. So without further ado, let's jump in. So I'm going to pull a bit of the black and the brown together, and then drag some of the silver in. I want it to be a kind of a, a warm, rusty silver that we've got going on here. And the blacks just to make sure that our colors give us room to highlight what we're putting down as a base coat. It's very easy with metallics to go too shiny at first. Obviously we've got washes, but uh, yeah. I'm expecting this to pretty much coat perfectly in one, which it does. So we're gonna get this down absolutely everywhere on the miniature. If you need to swap to a smaller brush, I'm using a large at the moment. Uh, I might struggle to get between the legs or in nooks and crannies. Although the places that I struggle to reach are going to be the ones that you struggle to see in addition. So maybe don't need to hit them, but I could always drop to a medium or something if I needed to. There we go. Like a minute to get a solid base coat. One brush full of paint. We're looking pretty good. Make sure I've not missed anywhere. Going to go back. Uh, not into the middle of the paints, but back to the damping pad, reawaken the brush, and uh, yeah, one last one to get some nooks and crannies. Okay, looking tasty. So pretty simple now, we just increase the proportion of silver, so drag our silver into the same bit on the palette, remove the excess, and then I'm going to test it on my hand first, test it on the palette, see how it picks out raised areas, and we're going to do this all over. So this should be picking out the edges a little bit more readily and should put some nice variation in to what we've got going on. If you want a stipple, like for instance, if you wanted the head to be lighter than the rest of it, you absolutely can or suggest volumes on the shoulder pads. It's pretty easy too. Don't forget the backs, the heels, they are easily missed, as are the toes. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly clean my brush off. And what we're hoping to do here is remove pretty much all of our previous colors to give us room for a really, really bright, almost exclusively silver step. We'll have a little bit of the paint left in the brush. That's absolutely fine though. Because 95% plus is gonna be the super shiny Vallejo Gamer Silver. So now this really is gonna be aimed particularly at the edges, should be quite a lot brighter. It should be pretty noticeable. With these baubles, they're gonna show up kind of shadows where your brush strokes have come from directionally. So come at it from all angles and you'll avoid that. I'm gonna start on top of the mini the areas that I want to be brighter. And then when there's less left on the brush, 
that will allow us to just go everywhere else without worrying too much. Okay, we've already got really high quality metallics going on there. We've used good techniques, we've used good paints for it. We've got a little bit of depth because we mix some non-metallics in with them. So, wash time. Clock's still ticking. Okay, so we've got Nuln Oil, Seraphim Sepia, and the Contrast Wildwood. Uh, Nuln Oil is dark, but it's quite weak. Seraphim Sepia tints all over, which is super useful for us uh, for kind of keeping those metallics warm. And then Wildwood's got a little bit of strength to it. So these two mixed together. I'm expecting one-to-one, -one, but we'll have a little look. One part. One part, I love that color. I use it a lot. Go in a little bit gently with this at first. And then we can test it over our silver. Cool. Okay, so we've got one to one to one. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of medium in with that. Two drops of medium. And this is going all over. We're gonna control where this goes though. We don't want excess pooling in any particular areas or anything like that. And try and keep your miniature at the same orientation all the way through. If you tip it about, you can end up with paint flowing to the left, to the right, up, down. You want paint to always be flowing in the same way. You'll avoid the possibility of staining and stuff like that. The areas that you're gonna find the most difficult will be large, flat areas. So areas like the arm will just turn out looking amazing, whatever you do, really. Uh, you should put more time into areas like the greaves and the shoulder pads. Particularly the shoulder pads, they get a ton of attention. You don't have as much opportunity to hide them with weathering from whatever your basing material is. Once you've finished an area, do make sure you check it back visually. Sometimes the pooling will just sneak up on you or you'll find a section that's streaky. A lot of what allows you to get a better quality paint job with uh, contrasts or with washes is not just going for like a one and done approach to each area of the model. So I'll be keeping my eyes on it, kind of redistributing the wash as needs be. And that should help us get a pretty high quality result even though we're really, really rushing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave my shoulder pads till last and then I'll give them a little bit of extra TLC. Do hit areas even if you struggle to reach them with your base coat just because we'll kind of we'll make the shadows more shadowy but we will maintain coherency okay so with that chest piece done we're on to the big expansive shoulder pad in the head obviously we want both of those areas to look as good as possible top down strokes left to right Pop our paint down, it'll look a little bit streaky at first, but it should kind of settle itself out. There we go. Okay, he's looking great. So at this point, you could absolutely do a second wash. We often do do a second wash uh, to really grime it down. I'm not going to in this case, but uh, if you want them to get, come from a really dark base, you absolutely can. So now I've got an opportunity for a quick repeat for the edges of the armor, just to make sure that they get some real TLC. What I'm gonna do is take my paint, drag some of my wash mix into it, because we can. And that's gonna really help us keep that coherency all over the model. We only had a little bit left on our palette, our brush isn't saturated or anything like that. Test how it looks on my finger, it looks about right. And then a very similar step to the one that we did before the wash. Against edges, if you want to catch them, think about your angles. This shoulder pad, if I want to highlight the bottom of it, I'll come from below. I want to highlight the front of it, I'll come from the side. We are specifically aiming for those edges, so think about your stroke patterns. You always want to be going never up and down a detail, you always want to be going against it if you want your paint to leave more readily. You can of course dip a little bit on the top, buff it up and suggest that 
being lit from above. Entirely up to you. At the point at which you're happy with how the brush is behaving, the paint's leaving, maybe you don't have to be as careful and then you can kind of get it with a more all over buffing approach. This is looking really, really good though. This is pretty much perfect uh, for speedy iron hands, I feel. Because we've mixed this in and we've made our final highlight dark that we've done with the dry brushing, that does leave you open if you wanted to do like some super bright scratching or anything like that. It does leave us open with that possibility. So if you want to weather it in multiple ways, then that's a great way to go about it. All right, so I've hit it with a quick varnish and it's time for us to undo all of that work. Obviously, if you want to paint certain sections black or white or, you know, striped as we are or whatever you're going to do, it's up to you which bits you want to pick. We're going to go for a shoulder pad with a decal though and maybe a shin, I think. So I'm just looking to quickly get two thin coats of a bad end down on the shoulder pad, which I'm going to stipple. And then I'll uh, I'll do it on the shin. I'll probably I'll mush in a little bit of it with stippling, but I'll catch the rest with layering around his toes because we don't want to slip over. Oh, it's a shame to cover over such nice shapes with that real depth that we had on them. But hazards do look brilliant, so it's a sacrifice I'm fine with making. Also, we're going to get to chip down to our previous step. So it's not like we're completely obliterating the work that we put in or that it was wasted. Two thin coats there and they'll be good to go. I have potentially against my own better judgment decided that the baubles would look wicked black too. And I have checked the book and the, um, the shoulder pads are very often blacked out. So I'm going to uh, quickly go around all these baubles with this. We might not need to highlight the black, uh, especially once it's weathered and chipped. Well, it is absolutely safe to say that painting around baubles in a rush is not my favorite thing. And uh, neither is applying decals in a rush. So let's see how this goes. I don't have any bad guy decals, so I was very, very limited in my choice. So this one's going to go on the shoulder pad. Not my favorite yellow, but while that's soaking up, we're going to lay down some hazards. This does, however, have pretty good coverage. So that's really important for us. Cheated 40 seconds there. Look to reference. All right, looks like you can pretty much just pick an angle for your stripes on the miniature and replicate that. Uh, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna pick uh, a 45 degrees upwards or downwards, and that should make my life a little bit easier at least. Uh, but looking at the model from the front is probably the most important thing. So I'm gonna find an angle that shouldn't be too hard while looking at it from the front. Whatever we do is going to feel hard here, especially while trying to go quick. Okay, so we're going to give that one some bros to its left and right. Be really careful with the spacing. And what I'll do is I'll go a little bit further than I want to, put down the middle of the stripe, and then I'll define the top and bottom of it. And uh, we're gonna lean really heavily on chipping and damaging this to be able to get away with the inevitable mistakes that I'm gonna make. All right, I'm gonna do the rest of this off camera because it's really in the way. Okay, so remember to change your water before doing decals. Generally, our guy's gonna be a bit messy, so this probably doesn't matter so much, but, uh, it's generally pretty good practice to not dump loads of pigment in when you're trying to get a smooth result with your transfers. I 
I've already brushed this off, but always pays to be super careful with it. Now what I like to do is kind of a, a approach it in a dragging motion and use parts of the shoulder pad or whatever the surface is in question to try and help myself out with centering. Backpack's kind of in the way for this, but it should be all right. So we've got two divots here. We know where the dead center is. So even if it looks squiffy, that should be as long as the, the tip of the head is roughly correct, that should be about right. So what do we do next? We have a transfer down, get a cotton bud or a Q-tip. And what I do is I slightly wet the end so that it's not fluffy. That's very important. And press the transfer down. So we've got something flat at the moment. It needs to adhere to the surface. What I'm going to do is I'm trying to squeeze it out and run any excess water out from underneath it. I make care not to do big pushing motions that are going to scoop it all out of the way. I'm talking too much. I'm running my timer down. But these are good tips. So once I've made sure of that, I'm going to take our setting solution. This will soften the transfer. I'm going to take a big old blob of this. I mean a big old blob. very wet brush as you can see and we're going to completely saturate this. Careful here because as you can see that much moisture you're just asking for it to move around. I've gently coaxed it down to the best of my ability it's still not flat at all. Now leave. Go away. Go and do something 15 minutes and leave this dude here. Okay, so having been away and not fiddled with it at all, what you should have, whether you've used moisture or if you've used a setting solution, is what we're, we're doing here is we're letting evaporation work on our side. So as it evaporates, it's going to suck that transfer down onto the surface that it's on, which it's done pretty much just with a couple of wrinkles. So back to our slightly dampened cotton bud or Q-tip. And now we're going to make care to kind of press down into the transfer and we're just going to try and iron out our wrinkles, basically. Be careful here because the solution softens up the transfer. It's how it works. Luckily for us, if it does chip it, we're just going to roll with it. We'll let fate decide. So I'm going to gently take my cotton bud into the middle of it. And you just try and even it out. Yes, yeah, so we've got one section that's going to crack. That's all right, it happens. You can always paint it in. And of course, once you've done this, you can hit it with a varnish to make it permanent once you got it to the stage that you want it to. So yeah, that's it. Transfer's on, pretty useful. Really, really striking, obviously. Given that we've got that wrinkle, I'm just gonna carefully pull off the bit that we don't want. Leave him chipped there. And I'll select a couple of other places just to get a little scrape in. Obviously our transfer is still shiny, so once this has been hit with the varnish, hopefully it'll all look like it's the same type of surface. Our transfer has been in the wars, which is appropriate because the rest of the guy definitely will have been also. Okay, so with that little excuse of a break, we're back to finishing off the freehand. When you're doing something like this, I can't recommend enough getting really close to your model, making sure the light is right, and making sure that you don't hang around too much with your brush, especially if it's getting close to your light, which is probably making a bit of heat, even if it's an LED one uh, or a tube or something like that. The closer this gets to your light, the hotter it's going to get. And it's a, if you're using a small brush, which I am using a triple zero, it's a very small area and small areas are more volatile they're more easily affected by the surrounding environment. So the closer this gets to my light, the closer it's going to get to drying out on the tip. 
and then the more of an issue I'll have with getting a good quality line. So what you want to do is get the consistency right on your palette. That seems about good. I can test it over black on my palette here. That's perfect. Wash my brush and then I can take from this. So take from that and then go straight to the model. Take it, test it, make sure you've not got too much on so you can remove it on your hand here. And then you've got a very short trip from going from your hand to your model. And that should really help out and get it really close to your face, your eyes, get your light right. And that should all make it a lot easier. We've not got long left if we were going to aim to have this done in an hour. Um, I've definitely put too much time into that freehand. It's not a particularly forgiving one to pick. Um, what we're going to do though is rather than having, you know, getting obsessed about fixing mistakes or whatever, <laughs> look at that. It's, it's right, he's had a bad car wrap. We're just going to put our damaging where the mistakes are. So if there's anywhere that I think looks particularly weak or a bit too wide or whatever on the yellow, I'm going to go in the black now and chip it. And uh, hopefully the fact that we've got that kind of strong repetition going on and then we're breaking the repetition will let us say, uh, you know, just skate slightly below the radar on how inaccurate our freehand is. We'll make sure we've not got it too dilute because it's not a particularly strong black. And then anywhere that I think looks particularly weak or weird, I'm just going to chip into a little. Now, obviously, this would happen more around the edges, so you should do that. That's convenient, though, because the edges are a bit where I think that I've screwed up the most and probably where people are the most likely to screw up in general. The one you want to avoid with stuff like this is avoid it looking like brush strokes. So if you can, keep it kind of chipped and jagged. And if you are using it side on, kind of dab at it, don't run along it. Otherwise you'll end up with what looks like an edge highlight rather than a bit of weathering. Okay, so yeah, I'll put some more of that down over that quickly, uh, not on camera. And that should make a really big difference to how much we can get away with our slightly sloppy freehand. That's made the world a difference. So we've got very little time left. Let's just rock on and try and do finishing details as fast as possible. Take the same sepia that we've already used. Hopefully we've got time to do two coats of this. Eyes, I think I'm just gonna go for red. I don't really have time to muck about, so let's go for Mephisto, which of course has insane coverage. Evil Sun's next. Still waiting for that sepia to dry. Not sure if I've got time to do the uh, the washing towards the back in the eye. I'm just gonna jump straight to Troll Slayer. boiling hot here in the UK at the moment. So I can get a quick glaze down. It's when you go really fast on models like this with a time deadline, which is why I think it's such a good exercise, that you work out the bits that really matter the most on a model. So obviously doing glowing eyes seems like a fancy technique, but they're gonna work so well with it being the only, the only red part of this model. I think that's a good use of my time if I'm trying to squeeze him in in under an hour.
and getting brighter towards the source. What we can do to counter the fact that we've gone real quick there and messy is drop a little detailing line back in to separate. there we've got one important step to go after this which may be a surprise for people looking pretty solid wonder what could be next okay so what we're going to do is we're going to try and chip the edges of those black areas back to our silver uh, because we've got the varnish down there we go we should be able to do this pretty easily and get a fairly striking result because, of course, those edges are going to be the brightest because the dry brushing steps that we did. If you want to see more on this, we go quite in depth on our Heresy Dark Angels tutorial, which was the first tutorial that we put out for the Heresy release. time. This looks good though, especially in the black areas. And again, those areas that we screwed up the most are the ones we're hiding. Okay, so we've done pretty well there. I'm going to slap a varnish on this and then we've got a final, final step to go. Okay, let me give you a hint. You know what happens when we get sad brush out on the channel, right? So uh, yeah, let's give this a go. So we've hit it with a varnish. And then we're just gonna have to be pretty brave with the rust, given that we don't have long. All right, we're looking better and we're feeling better. So, are we ready? Let me get some water ready. Get any, uh, any seconds I can get. One, two, three, go. So I do not have time to be delicate with this application. Ideally though, I won't end up drawing all over my model with it. Clean that finger up. Okay. I really hope that this goes well. Obviously, if you're not racing like I am, maybe you'll have the opportunity to do a slightly more delicate application. And uh, hopefully the application goes well. So we've got it down. Now what I'm going to do is make sure we've got everywhere and then basically we're going to remove it. Some baby wipe here from doing some marbling and we're just going to pull it off the raised areas. So we're using my sanding sponge. All right, that's all we're allowed. I'll pull the fluff off and uh, let's give it a blast with the airbrush. Help out the drying process and we'll see what we've ended up with. I 
ideally we get magic transformations before our eyes hit. Excellent, apart from the fluff, we need to remove. Backpack's looking great. Ah, we've missed a big bit down here. I'm gonna go in and fix that now, we can't have that. looks pretty striking not perfect at all by any means but uh that is a striking paint job and would it be a badass army hopefully you guys can see that the quality of the freehand just doesn't matter it's striking it jumps out at you um so it's doing exactly what it needs to do uh the rust doesn't look great around the eye there's a few areas where you know maybe we could agitate it out this stuff is water soluble so they're very easily cleaned up in those areas and if you want any areas to become brighter you can just wet them and the dirty down will dry out a brighter orange. That's it. So, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> he looks badass. I think probably the time for this, if you're doing it over a squad, it'd basically be halved, I imagine. Uh, I wouldn't do the freehand, like I said, wouldn't recommend that. I'd do the lines fatter, but where we've got that kind of rusty orange fade to more close to the untouched yellow there, the variation in that looks amazing. Looks like a dozer blade or something. So uh, yeah, I think he looks great. Dirty Down is fun. Speed painting is fun. I would thoroughly recommend trying this out. And um, perhaps you could do a final, very light dry brush on the edges. Maybe I'll allow myself one minute extra to show you how that would go. You could stipple some chips on as well, you know, it's up to you. The thing about weathering is all these steps are fun. So for me, obviously doing a paint job is about the deadline and how long you've got available. But at the point at which you're enjoying yourself, often what I find in this hobby is you just find time and uh, make time for the different aspects. Okay, so. Hit the gun from the top a little bit more. Backpack looks incredible. I can probably just about hit the baubles and edges of the pad only. Get those toes. Love these models toes. That bit there just looks the best. I mean, those hazards are completely acceptable given how wobbly they looked initially. They've definitely been polished. There we go. I think this model is literally like five minutes away from looking pretty incredible um, by tabletop standards, you know, not by Golden Demon standards, but slightly over an hour, we have a badass looking model. Uh, if you times that by 20, your army would look absolutely insane. So uh, yeah, thoroughly recommended. Check out the Dirty Down Rust. If you haven't, I'll put a link below. It's as much fun as it looks and uh, yeah. All right, we're done. We took a little bit too long. I think very heavily influenced by how much time I spent on the freehand. I should have done the stripes fatter. You know, obviously they, they'd look barely any less good for like taking half as long, being half as stressful and twice as fun. So I would do that if I was you. Don't do them that thin. Just enjoy your life, you know. Have fun doing your hobby instead of hating it like I did for those 15 minutes, whatever it was. The final result's really good. Definitely. It's very, very effective. This is a super solid, ultra efficient paint scheme. 
like I said in the intro, 20 to 30 minutes if you're batching these out, I think. You know, just things like having your colors, putting them all down on one guy at once, having your washes ready, doing all your dirty down at once, the wiping off, blah, 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 blah. You can maybe get away with doing the dirty down uh, one guy, one guy, one guy, one guy, one guy. If you wanted to spend a bit more time on it and be finicky about your highlights, you'll probably be rewarded for that. That's it, I reckon. What do you think of the paint job? I would be genuinely interested to know out of our recent tutorials. So we've got the black chipped Dark Angels, we've got the Empress Children in metallic purple, the Alpha Legion in metallic turquoise. Obviously, we do love the turquoise, the Imperial Fists, and this guy. Which do you think is the most effective when timesed by an army's worth of models? I would genuinely be very interested to know. Please let us know below and why, ideally. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for joining in. Sons of Horus are next. Um, I'm going away, but hopefully we'll have it out at some point in the near future. Anyway, that is it. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Do check out the link below for all the Artist Opus products that I've used in this. And we've also got Dirty Down added to the website. I'll make sure that's linked as well. It's worth trying out. It is the most fun in painting I have discovered this year. It is absolutely magic. I couldn't be more complimentary about it because it's just fun. That's it. Catch you in the next one. Thank you very much for tuning in.